Bill's made the case for the need to close the cycle. Unfortunately, to close the cycle, you need some energy intensive processes. You have to produce this plasma. And the most economic way to produce the plasma is to use a fusion device to do it, since fusion involves plasmas and it creates this hot sun like plasma. The concept is intimately involved with energy and new energy sources. It's only been in recent time that we have realized that the technology existed to do both. The fusion uh, uh, development program in the U.S. and the world has been very active and successful. The plan was and still is to build a large test reactor in France, which is called the International Test Facility, Te Tokamak, and this will cost I don't know, 40, 50 billion dollars, and will take 30 years. Because of that development, the myth has been propagated that fusion is too far off to really impact present needs like we're talking about. Fortunately, there are other ways of doing this, and there are small devices that could be developed much more rapidly, nothing else much more cheaply, and would be what we need for our approach. There is no other way that we know of to take complex, all the complex chemical elements on this planet and break them back down into the basic elements. You have to go to a very high temperature. For fusion, you don't need much material. When you burn coal or any fossil fuel, you're getting about one EV per atom. If you use the, what we were talking about, the proton-boron cycle, the fusion fuel cycle, you're getting uh, about 4.7 million. It's a measure of energy, electron volt. What Bill's talking about is not so far removed from what we're actually doing in some places yeah. today. Uh, I've been reading about the waste recycle plant that's being built in Florida near the St. Lucie power plant. And what this is going to do is use a plasma, but the plasma is produced by an electric arc, and it is going to have waste from the city waste dumps dumped into it, and they're going to vaporize that. But they don't break it down completely because the plasma is not hot enough. It's produced electrically, it's not hot enough. They do break it down to the point where they get flue gases off, which they're going to run to a power plant to burn, and they produce sort of a glassy-like material, which they're going to sell to highway construction companies to put in as a ballast below the highways. So with electrical plasmas, which is what people could do prior to fusion, you can produce some decomposition, but to go the whole way, which we have to do to close this cycle, we have to get a hotter plasma. And as far as I can see, fusion is the only answer. When we originally proposed this idea, we did not include the cycle in fusion that would not produce neutrons. This is the proton-boron 11 cycle. The data now, theoretical, has shown that that is a possibility and opens that possibility to us. Such a cycle would be ideal for producing the fusion torch kind of concepts because there would be no neutrons involved. There's essentially nothing there, virtually none. And it's also excellent for electrical production because the energy comes out as charged particles rather than neutrons. And as charged particles, you can make direct conversion and get efficiencies up to 90 about 90 percent. And that's been tested, hasn't it, George? The concept yes, the, of conversion. The, the concept has been tested. I, actually, here in California at the Lawrence Livermore lab some years ago, uh, methods for the direct conversion have been demonstrated using not a fusion source, but a small ion source that uh, simulated yeah. a fusion source. Technology then, I think, is in hand. 
And the small systems have been investigated, the boron systems being investigated for ship propulsion, because they could do that, or for space travel. It is that it is one of the most plentiful elements, well, it's a very plentiful element on the Earth. Uh, the United States is about the third largest producer in the world. We have a lot of it out here in California on the desert. In fact, and in fact next to uh, Edwards Air Force Base, next, there's Boron, the name of a little town. There's a town named Boron. <laughs> for that reason. It is a beautiful fuel for fusion because you have a plant that's radiation free and could be highly efficient and the fuel is plentiful. You could run all the power plants that are necessary in the world for thousands of years on the boron resources mm -hmm. that we have available. Today, after billions of dollars being spent, we have a whole reservoir of fusion technology and capability of using that technology to produce ultra-high temperature plasmas. Today, we can use those plasmas immediately without having ever achieved uh, net power from fusion. They can be used for those items that are so either toxic or so uh, desirable that you want to use that much energy to recover them. Certain military wastes, maybe certain medical wastes, biochemical wastes.